Okay, hi folks. We're back again and we'll be talking a little bit more about uh, random networks and in particular we're going to start looking at growing random networks, so situations where there are new nodes entering over time. And um, so this fits into our study of network formation, so in terms of the course, we are now in the second part of the course and we're looking at network formation models and again We've looked at static random network models, and now we're going to be looking at dynamic uh, random network models where there's growing numbers of nodes over time. And there's lots of examples where this happens in the world. So a prime example is citation networks. New articles are born over time. New articles can form links by citing old articles. Old articles can't cite new articles. Um, so articles are going to accumulate links over time. Newer articles are going to have fewer links than older ones, so there's a natural form of heterogeneity that forms this way. Same thing with the web in terms of web pages, collaboration networks, in, in co-authorships you have uh, older researchers, younger researchers. Um, older researchers will have had more collaborations than younger ones. Societies, uh, you know, generally human um, situations, you're going to have some older and some younger, and they're going to have different characteristics based just solely on age. So there's a natural form of heterogeneity that comes in um, in form of uh, age. So let's think a little bit about what they add. Um, why do we care about having growing random networks? Well, you know, w one answer people say, okay, what's well, more realistic? And one thing I want to emphasize just from the start is when we build models, we know that we're not going to try and capture everything in the world. And so realism is not usually a good reason for building a model uh, to, to try and match reality. Uh, the, the reason that we build models is to try and use as few moving parts as possible in order to pr reproduce the world. So the only reason we want to add this feature of growing random networks is not because that's the way the world is, but because this richer model might capture something in the real world that was not captured in the static uh, models. So again, you, know, you shouldn't judge models based on realism. They're always wrong. Uh, the question is, uh, are they capturing reasonable elements? And so here, the natural form of heterogeneity versus age is going to be useful in getting out uh, more connected nodes and less connected nodes and, and starting to see um, power laws and, and fat tails. So we're going to get a natural form of dynamics and in particular, we're going to end up with a natural way of getting different degree distributions without just building them into the statistical distribution. So we could just assume that there's a distribution which has the, the, the features of reality, but instead what we want to do is see if we can build a model that will end up generating features that look like the real world. And this sort of dynamics is going to help uh, quite a bit. Okay. <clears throat> So in, in order to start this, what we're going to do is start by just taking your dash Renyi random network situation, um, but instead just enriching it to have nodes being born over time. And so that'll be a simple benchmark that'll give us an idea of some of the techniques, and then we can enrich it to have different kinds of formation processes besides the uniform at random. Okay, so um, this idea of, of growing in uniformly at random, what we're going to have is each day is going to be a new node's birthday. So nodes come in at time one, two, three, four, etc. And when they are born, they will form a number of links to existing nodes. And to start, in terms of this Erdash Renyi kind of setting, what we're doing is we're going to assume that each node is going to uh, form its links uniformly at random to the ones that are already existing out there in society. Okay, so you're born, you decide who to link to, you form some number of links, and you form them to already existing nodes. To keep things simple, we're going to have the, the link formation process only occur when a node is born, so you don't keep forming them over your lifetime. You'll get new ones as new nodes are born and they form their links, but uh, a given node only forms its links, uh, it, it, its outward links in some sense, um, when it's born, but it can accumulate more links uh, later on as new nodes are, are forming their links. Okay, so um, in order to have some nodes that you can form links to when you're born, um, what we're going to do is each one is going to form m links at random, so we'll have m nodes that are already existing, uh, which are fully connected so that when the first node is born, it has somebody to connect to. So the, the process is going to start out 
we'll start it with a very simple uh, seed of already having some M nodes fully connected. You could start with a whole series of different uh, situations. That's not going to affect the asymptotic limit of it. It might affect uh, what it looks like for the short periods of, of time until you get um, to a very large time. Okay, new node is born. It forms M links to existing nodes, say two, three, four, whatever, however many we want. And um, what that means is if I'm already born and there's some time T, um, then uh, I'm going to have a probability um, that's, that's roughly M uh, of the, the number of links being formed compared to T of the existing uh, number of, of nodes that are, are already there uh, of getting one of the new links, right? So um, M over T will give, give us the probability. So the more nodes that are out there over time, the less chance that any particular node is going to get one of the new links, right? Okay, so very simple process. Um, but uh, it, it, it's going to have some dynamics to it. Okay, so now let's think about um, some node I that was born after the original M nodes that we started with that we fully connect uh, and, and um, before some time T. Okay, and now let's ask how many links has it, does it expect to have collected by time T? Well, the first thing is that it formed some M links when it was born. So it's going to have M links for sure. Then in terms of expectations, the next day after it was born, if it was born at time I, then the date now is I plus one. And there's some new node which is born and it's forming its M links. There's already existing I plus one links, uh, nodes out there. And so it has a chance uh, M over I plus one of getting one of these new links, okay? And then at time, the next date, there's I plus two, it's going to, a number of M new links are formed and so forth, right? So, so this is the overall sum um, of uh, what it's going to get over time, right? So we had the first M that it got when at birth, the expected from the next node born, and so on. So it has this sum. Now, if you want to look at a sum like this, so you look at this kind of sum, what is this, uh, what's an approximation for this sum? Um, well, these are harmonic numbers. So if you can, uh, if you remember your, your number theory, these are what are known as harmonic numbers. So they're growing proportionally to I plus um, some number. Um, so it's growing proportionally to the inverse of T. And if you sum a series like this, um, an approximation for this is going to be m times 1 plus log of t over i. So depending on, on how far you go out and when you started this series, you're going to end up with a, a, a sum that looks like this. So we have an approximation for what the expected degree is at, of any node after some time period t. Okay, so very simple calculation. And now what we can do is ask, what does this generate in terms of the distribution of degrees in society or the distribution of expected degrees in society at any point in time. Okay, so um, let's do a simple calculation. How many nodes have an expected degree of less than D at some time T? Well, it's those for whom their expected degrees at time T are less than some D, right? So uh, if, if you say, okay, how many are gonna have degree less than 100? then we can ask that. Or how many are going to have degree less than 35? We'll get some number. So at time t, it's going to be the i's for which this inequality holds. Okay, so let's have a look at that inequality in more detail. So let's suppose that we did this calculation um, at time 100. So we've got here our t is 100. And let's suppose that each node at each time uh, is, is um, forming 20 new links. So what does the degree of different nodes look like at time 100? So here we have the birth date of the node. So here is the birth date of the node. And this is then the equation that we had. So, um, uh, so, so this is our equation that we had um, in terms of 
m times 1 plus log t over i, right? So this equation right here is m times 1 plus log t over i. So that's plotted out here. And what that means is, as you can see, the older nodes have gotten more links than the younger nodes. So the, the youngest node has only formed its 20 and not gotten many more. Some of the slightly older nodes have gotten a little bit more than 20 because they've happened to get some of the new ones. These ones have been around for a longer time. They've gained more links. And uh, they, the reason that you have curvature here is it was easier to get links early on. And as more and more nodes are born, it's harder and harder to get the new links. So ones that are born later and later are going to have a harder time gaining new links than the ones that were born earlier and could get one. So you get a natural curvature there just due to that fact. Okay, so what do we get? Um, well, we can do the same thing for degrees at time 200. And at degrees at time 200, we'll have a slightly different curve. And, uh, you know, the ones that were born at 100, at time 100, now have had a chance to gain more links. Everybody's gained more links. Um, how much they've gained more depends on what their birth date was. And now we've got the, the 200th uh, node born has just formed its initial 20 links um, and so forth. So we're going to get different degree distributions at different times. We'll have a different, uh, uh, this is expected degrees over time. Um, we'll have a different distribution as time evolves. Okay, so what does this distribution look like? Well, we can ask then, what are the nodes, for instance, that have degree less than 35? What's the fraction of nodes? So let's go back to our time 100 and figure out what is a distribution function. So what is, you know, how many nodes, what does f of d look like? So how many nodes have degree less than some d? So what does f of 35 look like, right? We can do that kind of calculation. Okay, these are the nodes that degree less than 35 are the ones, or expected degree less than 35. Um, there's going to be some node which has uh, expected degree right at 35, and basically the nodes with degree, expected degree less than 35 are going to be the ones that were born afterwards, right? So these ones. So if we want to figure out the fraction of nodes that were born af uh, that have degree less than 35, it's going to be the ones that were born after this compared to the overall 100 that exist in the society so far. So let's go through that calculation. So what we want is the uh, actual amount that they have, the expected degree they have. Um, remember this is m1 plus log t over i. So here we have uh, t is 100, m is 20. So these are the nodes for which this equation is less than 35. Okay, we got that. And so if we solve that equation, then what do we end up with? We end up with these are the i's for which they're greater than, um, you know, you just take exponentials of both sides of this, solve out for i, and what you'll get is these are the i's for which uh, they were born after time 47.2. So basically the ones that were born 48 or later are going to have expected degrees less than 35. The ones that were born 47 and before are going to have expected degrees um, bigger than 35. So this is 47.2, this point right here. And now if you want to ask what's the fraction of nodes that have degree less than 35, well that's going to be the 47.2, so we're going to have 100 minus 47.2 over 100, right? So this is going to work out to be 0.628, right? So the, the fraction of nodes, um, or, you know, rough, roughly 63% uh, are going to be the ones that have degree less than uh, 35, so somewhere between 62 and 63% in this case have expected degrees less than uh, 25, okay? So given this process, we can figure out how degrees grow. We can figure out a degree distribution. And more generally, um, for any degree, the ones that have expected degree less than d at some time are going to be the ones for which i is bigger than same uh, solution as we just saw for the 35 t times e uh, exponent of minus d minus m over m, okay? 
So if you go ahead and solve that out, what we'll end up with is a degree distribution at time t that says the fraction of nodes that have an expected degree of less than d is um, given by this formula, 1 minus e to the minus d minus m over m. Okay, so very simple set of calculations, a little bit of algebra involved, um, some exponentiation, some summation of series, but basically what we're able to do is now calculate what the degree distribution looks like for this growing random network. Um, this is an exponential, negative exponential uh, distribution. So what we have is the distribution of expected degrees is such that d minus m is exponentially distributed with a mean of m. Um, what about the actual degrees? Well, a good approximation for large t, um, we're going to have to, you know, so, so here we did the calculations of expected degrees, right? So we, we, we can say how many each node expected, and we got a nice curve. Well, some, some nodes are going to happen to get more, some are going to happen to get few, so the actual degrees of the true nodes are not going to follow that really nice smooth curve, they're going to bounce around a bit. And what that means is the distribution can be slightly different than this distribution of expected degrees. Um, it turns out that this distribution of expected degrees is a good approximation of what the actual distribution of degrees will look like. Some will end up pushed above, some will end up pushed below, but on average you'll still expect around 63% to have degree less than 35 at time 100 and so forth. So if you go through and actually calculate the true distribution function, it's going to look um, it, as t becomes large, it's going to be well approximated by this negative exponential function. Now, actually doing that, you need some careful law of large numbers arguments. Um, I'm not going to do that here. I, I, in, in the book, there's some discussion of how you go about doing that. It's fairly straightforward. Again, it's just uh, making sure that the variation in the actual distribution isn't too large as you get... Uh, to a large t, the noise in the system is going to be well approximated by the mean. So, so here we've got a distribution of a growing random network. Um, things have worked out well. Okay, so in terms of where we're going next, um, we'll look at slightly richer growing models. We'll also talk about doing mean field approximations, other kinds of ways of calculating these things. So we'll look at a, 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 another set of growing random network models that allow us to uh, get richer and richer degree distributions out.